on car and bike. It is the brand new generation of the Porsche Cayenne from Dubai. The Jeep Compass Trailhawk driven down under. And from sunny San Diego, Triumph's new Speedmaster. So we're traveling the globe this week on CNB and bringing you everything that looks really hot and brand new. Welcome to a brand new episode. I'm Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. We'll get started straight off with the third generation of the Cayenne. A lot riding on this car for the company, of course, it is its best-selling model. And so, of course, with a new generation, our expectation only gets higher. Amir Naik was in Dubai to drive it. SUVs. We can't live without them and Porsche knows this all too well because it has tasted success with the Cayenne since 2002. More than 7,70,000 Cayennes have been sold ever since and now there's a new generation. Now the silhouette might appear to be similar to the outgoing version of the Porsche Cayenne but it isn't and you might feel that well, there's no difference between this and the outgoing one. Well, there's a reason for that. Porsche says that why, you know, why create something new when you can improve perfection? That's what this is about. This is the third generation of the Cayenne and yes, it gets uh, something new up front. Those are LED headlamps that you see there. And yes, the front bumper is all new too. Of course, there's a lot bit inside that they have changed. Right from the cabin, the way it looks and the way it drives. That's more important. And it's coming to India in uh, June this year. So, with that in the background, that's going to be my playground for today. And that's where I'm going to take the third generation of the new Cayenne. The new Cayenne is based on a vehicle architecture for which Porsche was not the engineering lead. The company has used VW Group's MLB platform, whose development was primarily handled by Audi. It's the same platform that underpins the second generation of the Audi Q7 and even the Bentley Bentayga, which is why the Porsche shares a lot with both these cars. The Cayenne shares the basic structure, drivetrain layout and even the suspension hardware. There's also the 48 volt powered active stabilizer bars and rear wheel steering system that are optional across the range. The Cayenne has grown. It is now longer and wider than before, but the wheelbase is the same. So clearly there was enough space at the back of this 5 seater SUV. However, the increase in length has had one advantage. Well, there are tons of features that this one gets and especially driver assist features uh, which is a first uh, for the Porsche Cayenne. Uh, the third generation actually brings out a different side of the Cayenne that we've never seen before and takes up uh, the mantle of being probably the best luxury SUV there is. <laughs> You get a 12.3-inch HD infotainment touchscreen, haptic switches on the center console and an instrument panel with an analog tachometer flanked by two 7-inch HD display screens, which provide you with details like G-force, tire pressure monitor, navigation and even fuel economy. And yes, there's Apple CarPlay too. However, not everything is a hand-me-down from the Panamera. The Cayenne stands out on its own with a new brake technology which is called the Porsche Surface Coated Brakes. The technology makes its debut on the new Cayenne and is composed of cast iron brake rotors coated with tungsten carbide, which help in increasing friction, thus reducing dust and improving the rotor's life almost by 20%. It's not standard technology though. You'll get it as an option on the other models only if you choose 20 or 21 inch wheels. The fun package though is under the hood. 
Sadly, the turbo couldn't make it in time, as paradoxical as it may sound. Frankly, from behind the wheel, the Cayenne is pretty much compact. Yes, we've driven both the uh, S version as well, but this one is uh, the base version. So, this one gets a 3-litre V6 engine, which churns out 335 brake horsepower, which is 40 more than it was before, and there's 450 newton meters of torque, which is also more than before. Uh, 0 to 100 is done in uh, just under 6 seconds, and that's pretty good, isn't it? The acceleration actually is uh, pretty nice. The new six-cylinder engine works beautifully well on this car. There's hardly any vibration that comes inside. Even when I'm talking to you, uh, I'm on a rough patch. And yes, I, I don't have to keep my uh, a voice at a higher pitch at all. But this one's pretty well sorted in that case. Uh, it's got active suspension. It's got driving modes that you can toggle through uh, on gravel, on rock, on mud, on sand. All that can be done with ease. And it's just a simple luxury car, a simple luxury SUV, which you can take to your office. And then if you want to just do some off-roading, go ahead and do that. The Cayenne has the all-wheel drive system and two lockable differentials. We even got a chance to check out the electronically controlled hill climb and descent driver assist features. Once engaged, the assist systems do not deactivate till you do so manually. The Cayenne S gets a new 2.9-litre V6 which is good enough for 434bhp and 550nm of peak torque. It's a treat at 0 to 100 km per hour takes just 5.2 seconds with the top speed rated at 265 km per hour. The turbo version is powered by a 4.0 litre V8, belting out 550 horsepower and 717 Nm of torque and exceeding its predecessor's numbers by 30 horsepower and 20 Nm of torque. It claims a sprint to 100 km per hour in 4.1 seconds. It's on this one that I engaged the Sport Plus mode and immediately the optional adaptive suspension stiffened up and it all came together. Both the cars I drove came with the optional Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control which has an electrically operated anti-roll bar system which provides quicker response times than the older car's hydraulic system and yes, it was always eager to go. The turbo gets an active spoiler as standard. The spoiler automatically changes its angle by 20 mm to increase downforce if one is doing speeds in excess of 160 km per hour. The angle is further increased to 40 mm in the Sport Plus mode. If the sunroof is kept open, it takes this into account and further modulates to 60 mm so that the car is still aerodynamically efficient. Pricing will start at just over the 1 crore rupees mark, at which you also have the Range Rover Sport for company. Against this British off-roader, the Porsche does offer a credible option. The styling doesn't scream all new, but the car's drive is promising and what I can confirm is that Rocky Mountain trails are a piece of cake for this one. The flagship SUV might have lost its lead to the Macan, but it still is one of the largest selling models for Porsche in India. In fact, with this third gen, we won't be surprised if it goes on to become one of the best selling Porsche of all times. It'll launch in just about a couple of months time from now and when it does, it will be Triumph's most affordable cruiser model here in India. And it was very apt that we got a chance to ride it in the United States, in San Diego to be more specific and uh, King Shook will tell you why. No doubt about the fact that modern classic motorcycles are going to be in vogue for the foreseeable future. Take Triumph Motorcycles for instance. The company has been expanding its modern classic lineup every year 
and late last year, it unveiled the Triumph Speedmaster, which could be called as a more practical version of the drop-dead gorgeous Boreal Bobber. You might be fooled into thinking that the Speedmaster is just a variant of the Bobber with a pillion seat. Sure, the engine, design and the cycle parts are more or less similar, but the Speedmaster has a distinct personality of its own. It gets a rear mudguard along with chrome grab rails and a pillion seat, of course, which gives it that signature laid-back attitude and much-needed practicality as well. Standard features on the Speedmaster include anti-lock brakes, switchable traction control, ride-by-wire, two riding modes, road and rain, all LED lighting, cruise control and a trip commuter as well. Country roads, Californian sunshine, and a cruiser motorcycle with a devil mecha attitude. Yes, I'm talking about the all new Tram Speedmaster. Now this motorcycle, in essence, is somewhat similar to Bonneville Bobber. It gets the same 1200cc high torque parallel twin engine, but the riding characteristics are somewhat different. And a first impression of the motorcycle has been pretty positive, to say the least. <laughs> The engine on the Speedmaster is the same as on the Bonneville Bobber, which is a 1200cc high-torque parallel twin liquid-cooled unit, which makes max power of 76 bhp at 6100 rpm and peak torque of 106 nm at 4000 rpm. It is a capable motorcycle without a doubt. The engine is a torque powerhouse. A huge chunk of the torque is available from as low as 1800 to 2000 rpm, which makes city riding and overtaking a breeze. The bike can happily cruise at triple digit speed all day long as we experienced on Californian highways. The bike is eager to change directions quickly but is let down by low clearance. We found the ride quality to be slightly stiff while taking the bike over manhole covers and a small section of broken tarmac. But it is surely not a deal breaker. We hear that the bike will be launched in India towards the end of March or beginning April 2018. Our expectation is that the bike will be priced at around 10.5 lakh rupees and for that kind of money, you sure do get a lovely looking cruiser, motorcycle with oodles of charm and attitude. The Jeep Compass, I just have to mention the name, you know everything about it, it's been a runaway success here in India and it is our NDTV Car of the Year for 2018 as well. Now we are going to gear up for the Trailhawk edition. It's the first compass that I had driven in the US many months ago as well. Cyrus got the chance to test it and guess what? It is coming to India pretty soon. The Jeep Compass, an SUV that shook things up in its segment with great prices. You have probably seen a fair few on the street and for good reason. It is well made, well equipped and a great driving SUV which of course is also the reason why it won the 2018 NDTV Car of the Year award. But as with everything, the compass range needs to evolve too. We're all very well used to the Compass in India by now. It has cost down over 10,000 units in sales. And what Jeep does need to do now is spice things up a little bit. So this is a new variant. It's called the Trailhawk. And the Trailhawk badge has always been used with the most off-road ready versions of all Jeep models. It's, it's a badge that is offered through the whole range. Now most of the changes on the car you can't really see on the outside. But there are some visual changes. So let's take you through all of those first. A big change of course is this little black vinyl batch on the bonnet, very cool, very sporty and the whole black theme continues through the whole car and in fact a black and red theme continues through the whole car. So you get the blacked out grille as compared to the uh, chrome bits that you get on the normal standard car. So all of this has been blacked out and telltale trailhawk signs, these lovely tow hooks in the front. Now they aren't plastic, they are metal, they are very very rugged and they can get you out of a sticky situation if you ever manage to get yourself into one. Other changes, the blacked out badges and a sort of whole blacked out theme that continues through the car including the trim on the side and the badges at the rear. The same theme continues on the interior. The Compass finally gets an all black interior with red accent stitching. 
and of course Trailhog badges. The red theme continues with the red accents on the instrument cluster, gear shifter and on the door panels. The Compass Trailhawk as we mentioned is the off-road ready version in the lineup. So it was only natural to find ourselves a trail here in rural Tasmania and see if we could go spot some Tasmanian devils. To make it easier off-road, the Trailhawk gets new underbody skid plates that protect the engine, gearbox and the differential. It also gets off-road spec suspension with heavy duty shock absorbers and the ground clearance has been increased by 20 mm. You also get all terrain tyres with a more aggressive tread pattern and a unique two tone set of Trailhawk 17 inch wheels. Now, apart from all those things that we talked about, like the skid plates, you also get a lot of other additions to this particular uh, Trailhawk. For example, this car has the diesel automatic. Uh, in India, we still get just the diesel manual. This one, a 9-speed automatic made by ZF and it is a traditional torque converter. So while it might not be as quick as dual clutch is, it certainly takes all those off-road uh, driving conditions really, really well, especially the very slow rock crawl stuff that we are doing right now. The other big addition in the Trailhawk is the fact that you get a four-wheel drive low mode. The Indian car gets only the four-wheel drive lock mode. Uh, four-wheel drive low is what you really need. We are going to do the more hairy chested, the more hardcore stuff. And uh, we've been using it all day today because this isn't simple stuff. This trail might look easy, but it is quite challenging, quite tough, especially when you're traveling over all those rocks. And especially for all those rocks, the Jeep Compass Trailhawk now gets a rock mode. And that is an addition to the sand, snow and mud modes that you get on the standard car. And it gets hill descent control as standard too, making it quite the potent off-road weapon. While the Jeep Compass Trailhawk does serve its purpose off-road, most people in India especially are going to use it on-road a lot more. So let's turn off that four-wheel drive, put back into auto and uh, see how it actually performs on tarmac. Now straight off the bat, the automatic gearbox just makes a world of difference in the Compass, especially considering the fact this is a large-ish SUV, especially in the Indian context and an automatic gearbox just makes everything so much easier. Um, it is a 9-speed gearbox, as I did mention earlier, a ZF unit. It is not a dual-clutch transmission as the petrol version gets. It's going to be a traditional torque converter. And yes, it isn't as quick as we'd expect a modern gearbox to be, but well, it is smooth. It does its job really well. And most importantly, it will bring in a chunk of new customers to the Compass, all of which have been desperately waiting for that diesel engine and automatic gearbox combination. While the Australian spec car we drove here is slightly different in terms of the way it is tuned, both in terms of steering response and suspension geometry, the final spec on the Indian car hasn't been locked in just yet. So we will have to wait and watch and see how Jeep India sets up the Trailhawk for Indian driving conditions. The Trailhawk will make it to India this year and will of course be the top of the line model in the Compass range, sitting above the limited variant. Expect prices for the Trailhawk to be around the 23 lakh range, X showroom and be quite popular, especially with the urban crowd. So the Compass Trailhawk should be here pretty soon and what's more interesting is that that diesel automatic that many of you have been asking for may also be considered for India. Now next week, it is the big event. It comes only once every two years, that is the Auto Expo. And our entire team is gearing up to bring you comprehensive coverage from there. It's going to be on carandbike.com. It's going to be, of course, on NDTV 24-7. Lots to look forward to and you better believe it. We'll have everything covered, including the best of the Auto Expo in our CNB Auto Expo Excellence Awards. So lots to look forward to next week. Stay with us right through it. Wear your seatbelts, wear your helmets. Bye.